Walsh Gymnasium on the campus of Seton Hall University. This is Big East Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Seton Hall hosting Villanova here on the campus of Seton Hall University in South Orange, New Jersey. Courtside everybody here in South Orange, Sean St. Jacques, Megan Caffrey here with you. Excited to bring you the first broadcast on the Big East Digital Network in 2020. Happy New Year everybody. And Megan, we've got a really fun game to open up 2020. Seton Hall trying to end a losing streak against Villanova. Wildcats trying to get back above 500 in conference play. The Pirates are hoping to keep this two game win streak that they have in conference play. They started off on the road winning their first two conference games. Now they're at home this weekend hoping to continue that with another win here today. Let's take a look at the series history between these two. Obviously we mentioned Villanova has the better of it in recent years. Seton Hall looking for their first win over Villanova in conference play since 2016. And obviously Villanova has done really well on the road here in South Orange in the series as well. Yep, and one of the key factors that's going to be for Villanova today is senior forward Mary Gadeka. She has just been consistent for this Wildcats offense, especially. If you look at her for, throughout the first two conference games, she scored 18 points apiece in those games. Big East Weekly Honor Roll member this season. She's been one of the big pieces for Villanova over the last couple of seasons. One of our players to watch today in South Orange. The other is Seton Hall's Maya Jackson coming off a monster game on the road in a win over Xavier. Monster game is to say the least. She had a career high 25 points in that game and to, to that point she was efficient in that game especially. Did it in front of her hometown family and friends as well. Looking to do it again today for Seton Hall as they get ready to take on Villanova here from South Orange. It's the Pirates and the Wildcats coming up next on the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi. Amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. What is a Villanovan in 30 seconds? Well, Villanovans aim high. Top 50 national university high. We think fast and stay connected. V's up. Villanovans think deeply, push boundaries, and go, go, go! Still with me? We climb corporate ladders in these ladders. This campus is our home, but you can find us almost anywhere. Villanovans have big hearts to solve even bigger problems, and we celebrate together. Ignite change. Go Nova. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. PM today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Sean St. Jacques alongside Megan Caffrey. You're on the Big East Digital Network presented by Sean St. Jacques. You're on the Big East Digital Network presented by Sean St. Jacques. You're on the Big East Digital Network presented by Sean St. Jacques. You're on the Big East Digital Network presented by Sean St. Jacques. You're on the Big East for both teams. Obviously, Villanova coming in one and one in the Big East this season. Seton Hall trying to make it three in a row to start off the Big East campaign. Let's start, let's start with Villanova, obviously, two players to watch. Mary Gadeka and Madison Segris. We mentioned Gadeka at the top. Segris has been a redshirt last year and now is their leading scorer. 
and she's what everyone's been calling this freshman sensation that's come in. She really is powering this offense, and I think you look at both her and Mary Gadeka. The two of them are what people are calling a two-headed monster. I like to call them the M&M. They've been fantastic this season for Villanova. Seton Hall starting lineup, pretty normal, but you mix in a freshman Lauren Park Lane with the veteran Janine Samuels and the sharp shooting Alexis Lewis, along with the hero from the Butler game, Barbara Johnson. And when you're looking at the Seton Hall starting lineup, Lauren Park Lane is just a true point guard is what the Seton Hall coaching staff has told us time and time again. She is really able to get her offense going. Desiree Elmore, of course, in the starting lineup as well. She's been phenomenal this season for Seton Hall. Seton Hall are in the home whites. Villanova in the road navy blues with the white trim. And Seton Hall controls the tip with Park Lane. And we are underway from South Orange, New Jersey. Johnson with an early take. Comes up just a bit short off the front of the rim. And Villanova has the early rebound. We are underway in the first quarter. Seton Hall with two impressive road victories. A 15-point come-from-behind victory against the Butler Bulldogs. Uh, Big East's opening night as Park Lane gets the steal. All the way to the bucket. Lays it in off the glass. That's one thing Good that's going to be... Good start for the freshman. That's one thing that's going to be really important for these Seton Hall Pirates is just upping the tempo of this game, playing to their advantage and getting steals wherever they can and then getting what they like to call six-point plays. That was Gadeka who passed up the shot initially. Nine to shoot for Villanova. They're going to be using a lot of the shot clock throughout this game. Gadeka has five to shoot. Drives in on Elmore. Tough shot off the glass, no good. Tipped and rebounded by Shadeen Samuels. Here come the Pirates. Samuels almost got all the way to the basket. Kicks it out for Lewis. Baseline jumper, Elmore. No good, in and out. And Villanova has the rebound. Maddie Segrist, the redshirt freshman from Poughkeepsie, New York. Take a look at the keys to the game. Obviously, Gadeka and Segrist are important. Gadeka long on the three there. Fight for the rebound. Samuels has it. But, of course, they want to control the tempo as much as they can as well. They want to stop Seton Hall from running, although Park Lane almost got to the bucket before she was fouled. That's one important thing for this Villanova team to really get into their system. They want to slow this game down. They want to work the shot clock for as long as they can to just play at a slower pace. That's so unlike what Seton Hall is used to. They are used to pushing tempo. Lewis will inbound. She's been up and down at times shooting the basketball this season for Seton Hall, but at times you see her potential as Shadeen Samuels drives inside and draws the foul. She'll head to the line for two free throws. Second foul already on Raven James, the Upper Marlboro, Maryland native. So she'll head to the bench. And Kenzie Gardler has to come in already. Early minutes for Harry Peretta's bunch as Shadeen Samuels heads to the free throw line. Was dealing with a hamstring injury earlier in the season as she knocks down the first. Talked to Coach Bazella before the game. He said he's still dealing with a little bit of knee pain, but getting back to where we saw her early in the season, which is one of the most dominant players in the conference. She was picked to be the preseason player of the year for a reason. Doing it on both ends of the floor. She knocks down both free throws. And Seton Hall is off to a 4-0 start. Just about two minutes gone here inside Walsh Gym in the first quarter. Segrist finds Gadeka, who is sworn by Elmore and Lewis. Long three-pointer is good from Maddie Segrist. Not sure freshman's off the mark. Villanova's got their first points. It's 4-3 Seton Hall. And when Segrist has that space, she is going to take every opportunity that she has if she has an open shot. Post up Samuels and say goodnight. When she gets that far inside, it's tough to stop her. And Seton Hall's got their lead back up to three points early on. To your point, Sean, that's one thing that makes Shadeen so hard to stop is she's also a really aggressive player, too, and will sacrifice her body in a lot of plays. Segrist again from three. That's good again. They left her open two times in a row. And both times, she knocks it down. Six early points, 6-6 six, six here inside Walsh Gym. And again, the keys for Seton Hall. Obviously, Gadeka and Segrist are the two to watch defensively for the Pirates, although here comes Villanova. Ball was tipped from behind, saved by Ankin, and Gadeka will reset. That's one thing that the Seton Hall Pirates are also going to want to try and 
hone in on today is they want to try and get as many rebounds as they can, both offensive and defensive, because if they're able to get the defensive rebounds, then that doesn't allow Villanova the opportunity to reset the shot clock and try and work down that pace like they're trying to do. Foul against Barbara Johnson. First team foul against the Pirates. Seven minutes to go in the first quarter. Down it to Bridget Herlihy, a senior from Braintree, Massachusetts. Fight for it on the far side of the court, a jump ball as Samuels and Segrist went for it. And it's going to stay with Villanova with 13 to shoot. Tempo, both coaches stressed it when we talked to them pregame. Villanova trying to use up as much of the shot clock on each possession as possible. Seton Hall trying to run Villanova down in every sense of the term. Four to shoot here for Gadeka. Fights through traffic, no good. Good defense by Elmore. And here comes Lauren Park Lane. Great find, Alexis Lewis, too strong on the triple. And the rebound by Ankin for the Wildcats. Up ahead, offensive foul against Segrist, trying to push through Lewis. Tough miss for Lewis on that last seat Hall possession, but that's one thing that you'll realize from her. She has the green light from her coach to continue to take those shots. That was similarly to her game against UConn. She was going after these shots. Nothing was seeming to go in in the very beginning, and that was one of the Fox All Access games. We could hear head coach Tony Bazella tell her, keep going. One of these shots is going to go in eventually. Lewis, never afraid. Short, though, on the three. And Onkin with another rebound for Villanova. Maya Jackson picks her up. Half court, of course, had that 25-point game in the win over Xavier. Had 250 family and friends at the game. I can't remember the last time I saw 250 members of my family, I'll tell you that. A great block on the three-point line there as well. Pirates turning it up defensively, but Maya Jackson was certainly the star, and Shadeen Samuels showing you there why she's got star quality as well. How about that? Putting on a show for all of your families and friends, that is a way to just show them what they're missing with you. Kadeka, nice crossover, but Elmore stays with her on the baseline. Jackson there to help, gets the ball on a steal. Jackson's so tough on both ends of the floor. Coach Mazzella told us it's really from her family, the way that they kind of grazed her. And Coach Mazzella took no credit when we talked to him pregame for her toughness on both ends of the floor and her ability to be a firecracker off the bench shooting the basketball. Gadeka blocked again on the three. Thought she was fouled, didn't get the call. Here's Elmore, looked clean. Euro step Elmore, yes and a foul! And that is exactly what the Seton Hall Pirates want to do. You get the stop on defense and then you push it down, get the layup and how versatile has Desiree Elmore been in her time as a Seton Hall Pirate? She's got a bag of tricks on the offensive end of the floor, and he's kind of one of the more underrated players at times, it feels like, in the conference. But then she puts up numbers like she's put up this season. You get reminded how good she is. And she's really taken a huge leap from last season. She, The biggest thing with her that you notice is she's come back more fit this season, and you're able to see it with how she is playing. We've seen her already defensively with a couple of big stops as well for Seton Hall. Gardler that time, but here's Samuels on the pick and the bucket. A scoop and score for Shadeen Samuels, who looks a lot closer to the great player we saw from the end of last year in the early parts of this season. And Seton Hall opens up a five-point lead with under five to play in the first. Segrist, oh, smooth. Gets to her spot and knocks it down. Lewis assessing her options. Here's Lauren Park Lane. Elmore fires for three, that's short. And Onkin again on the weak side rebound. Segrist, top of the key. And we mentioned she redshirted last year. And now is the team's leading scorer. Coach Perretta told us before the game as the bucket is good inside from Hurley on a nice drive. Villanova back within one. Coach mentioned Segrist just kind of started to show the signs at the end of last season, how good of a score she could be. But even Coach Peretta said, didn't realize she'd be able to put up 41 in a game <laughs> at some point this season. And she torched the LaSalle Explorers in big five play 
earlier this season. Lauren Park Lane travels. Maloxi and Johnson will check back in, but that'll happen after the timeout. 3.59 to go in the opening quarter. Pirates with a one-point lead on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. What is a Villanovan in 30 seconds? Well, Villanovans aim high. Top 50 National University high. We think fast and stay connected. V's up. Villanovans think deeply, push boundaries, and go, go, go! Still with me? We climb corporate ladders in these ladders. This campus is our home, but you can find us almost anywhere. Villanovans have big hearts to solve even bigger problems, and we celebrate together. Ignite change. Go Nova. Pirates up by one inside Walsh Gym. Sean St. Jock, Megan Caffrey back here with you on the Big East Digital Network. There's Shadeen Samuel, six points already for Seton Hall, and now up to over 1,000 points for her Seton Hall career. 1,001 to be exact, now up to six points. 22nd player ever in Seton Hall women's basketball history to score over 1,000 points. And just a huge accomplishment for Shadeen, especially after she did miss four games this season due to an injury. She's come back, and she is aggressive as ever that you want to see her out on the floor like that and it's just a really great tip to her tip in the hat to her career one of the many achievements that could be expected from Shadeen Samuels this season and you mentioned earlier obviously Big East preseason player of the year but also in the running for Big East defensive player of the year this season as well that's a rare feat even to be nominated for both of those at the same time so the fact that she's got all that going for her just shows how impressive of a career she's had in South Orange. Speaking of impressive, Kadeka with no problems inside, and Villanova has their first lead of the day. Jackson, quick response, yes, a floater baseline. How smooth was that? And the Pirates take the lead right back. Smooth as butter, that's one of the strengths of Maya Jackson. She can shoot both inside and outside, basically anywhere on the court that she's gonna have an open shot. Kadeka, as Johnson almost Picked the pass off of Brooke Mullen, the freshman from Pennsylvania who just checked in. She was in a little bit of trouble, but Kadeka has it with 10 to shoot. Selena Filoxi who checks in is on her. Johnson knocked it away, but only as far as Mullen. Segrist has got to get it up with two. Finds a space in the lane, just a little strong off the back of the iron. And Samuels finds Park Lane on the outlet. Samuels hesitates, lost it. Segrist and Johnson battling for it. And it's with Villanova. Mullen comes out with it, and here comes Gadeka. It's one of the things Harry Peretta mentioned, trying to get some turnovers and, and find the hot hands, but he'd love to see players like Cameron Onkin start knocking down some shots as well. Especially on defense, he did point out that he wants to see Maddie Segrist play a little bit tougher defense. He said that you've been seeing just how prolific of an offensive player she is, but you do still see that youth, that she is a freshman in some of her defensive, la defensive laps that she'll have. Segrist, Gadeka, who was an important part of Villanova's team last year as well, becomes an even more important part this year with the players they lost. Segrist not afraid, short on the three from the far corner. And Shadeen Samuels comes out with the board. Nice find up the court. Kind of spread out Villanova a little bit. 
bit of a zone defense. Faloxi finds Samuels top of the key. Too strong. And Hankin right there for another rebound for Villanova. She's up to four rebounds already. Minute and a half to go in the opening quarter. Been a low scoring first quarter so far. That's got to be an early win for the Wildcats for sure. Here's Gardner inside. She gets blocked by Park Lane. Music to Harry Perretta's ears, a low scoring game. Jackson for three. That's too strong. And Segrist has the rebound. Seagulls getting the looks they want, I think, but just not knocking down shots right now. Scoring drought just over two minutes. Gadeka, though, short on the three. And Johnson, first two there for the Pirates, and she draws the foul. So Villanova, one and one so far in the Big East this season. Had that grinder of an opening win, as you look at Harry Peretta there in his 42nd and final season as Villanova's women's basketball coach. 771 wins. Done just about all you can do in the game. <laughs> I was going to say, do you have 771 of anything? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe 771 nice things to say about Harry Peretta. That's about all I can think of. That is very true. And especially in talking with Tony, Tony Bazella before the game, he just spoke so highly of Harry Peretta and everything that he has been able to do for the game of women's basketball and especially be a mentor for him and so many other coaches around the league. So well respected around really all of basketball as Johnson knocks down the first. And we talked to him about, you know, so much more left in the season. He can't really reflect on anything yet. And there's a long way to go. He's trying to fight. He says his team's trying to survive right now. It's the Big East. It's business as usual. But he's, he did mention with four or five games to go, he said it might start to sink in that, you know, this is the last ride for one of the best that's done it at this level of basketball. And the amount of stories that he has to tell are just amazing. Karanji, her first look, knocks down a three. And Villanova, they're in this, tied up, 15 apiece. Coming down on 40 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Jackson, Elmore baseline jumper is off the back of the iron. And the rebound to Karanji. Sophomore from Lansdale, Pennsylvania. She's one of the players that I think Coach Peretta was hoping will kind of start knocking down a couple of shots. And, and that's been the thing, you know, Coach Bazella said, we're trying to stop 20 and 30, Segrist and Gadeka. And Coach Peretta saying, you know, we're trying to get those guys involved, but we want our role players to start making some shots, give us a better chance to win so they don't have to keep fighting in these low scoring games. Shot clock violation. In the final seconds there for Villanova, there's going to be time here as Johnson did launch a half-court heave. There's going to be about a second left here for Seton Hall at the end of the first quarter. Coach Bazella was just making sure that their officials were going to put some time on the clock. They got it at about a second. Park Lane on the inbounds. Long three-pointer is short. It was online. But Lauren Park Lane, never afraid to shoot from that distance, just up a little short. A very competitive first quarter. Seton Hall and Villanova knotted up at 15. We head to the second on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. 
I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. Second quarter, Seton Hall Villanova here on the Big East Digital Network. Sean St. Jack, Megan Caffrey here in South Orange. You see Harry Peretta there, his 42nd year as the Villanova Wildcats head coach. Run through the numbers here, obviously, 771 wins, 13th all time, seventh winningest active Division I coach, and obviously the winningest coach in Villanova women's basketball history, but also men's as well. Has more wins than the great Jay Wright also. Just an unbelievable resume for Harry Peretta. And then uh, to add on top of it, the amount of mother-daughter pairs that Coach Peretta has coached is a really fun storyline to go along with his success, two of which are on the team right now in Mary Gadeka and Sam Karangi. Obviously made it to an NCAA Elite Eight 2020 20 win season. That's 20 20 win seasons, 11 NCAA tournament appearances, 16 Philly Big Five titles, and three Big East tournament conference championships. As a drive and a bucket for Desiree Elmore out of the timeout, gives Seton Hall the lead and a chance to extend it to three from the charity stripe. Big East is certainly going to miss Harry Perretta when it's all said and done, but certainly a lot more to enjoy for one more season with him as the head coach of the Villanova Wildcats. As Elmore completes the three-point play, and Seton Hall has an 18-15 lead at the start of this second quarter. Good way to open it up in the second quarter for the Pirates, but you have to say Villanova's pace seems to be going at least in their momentum so far, not showing up quite yet on the scoreboard, but they have really been able to dictate it so far, though Lewis trying to change that with a steal. It's a one on two, she pulls it back. Elmore underneath, had to regather and then lost it trying to find Lewis on the perimeter. And Villanova gets the ball right back, Herlihy finding Mullen, who was open for three, short. And the rebound is with Shadeen Samuels. Samuels looking to push the pace, Jackson for three. No good. Lewis rips it away from Herlihy underneath the basket. Jasmine Smith over to Samuel. Smith just checked in for the Seton Hall Pirates. Elmore traveled before she went inside. And Selena Faloxi will come back out onto the floor and give Desiree Elmore a blow as she heads to the bench. And that is just a call that you don't want to have on that possession. After you have Alexis Lewis being really aggressive to get the ball back for your team, you get a fresh shot clock. And that's just something that you really wish doesn't happen there. That's what Villanova's looking for, though, turnovers. And it's going to keep you in the game when you're on the road. And how about a three from Bridget Herlihy? And Villanova's tied up again, 18 apiece. Herlihy was left open. I think Seton Hall's okay with her taking that shot, but even Coach Peretta told us, if we're making those open threes, we're going to have a really good chance as Veloxi drives. It was blocked but she was fouled, she'll head to the free throw line. And one of the things about Bridget Hurley is that her shot extends to the three-point line. And one of the things that the Villanova Wildcats have been so good at in past years is three-point shooting. And she is one of those players that can, it can give that to the Wildcats this season. Faloxia Jr. from Queens, New York. Wide right on the free throw. Always has been a great defensive presence for this Seton Hall team under coach Tony Bazella. Times they want to see her a little more aggressive down low, especially on the offensive end of the floor. She does miss the second free throw as well. So the game remains tied, 18 apiece. Another open three chance there. Onkin, though, thought better of it. Herlihy back to Onkin, and Villanova will reset. Couple of open looks that Villanova's been able to create by getting the ball up the floor. Faloxi again trying Get the steal, couldn't quite that time underneath. It leads to the basket, and it's Mary Gadeka striding to the basket, and Villanova takes a two-point lead. And that is exactly what Villanova wants to do on offense. They do want to get those buckets that they can get from one of their two-headed monsters. And the risk from Faloxi trying to get the steal ended up leading to that bucket down low. Lewis for three, off right. Fight for the rebound, and Villanova has it. 
Cameron Onkin early on, defensive rebounds for her. She's gotten a gobble full of them so far. I think she's up to five already, just going on the weak side and gobbling up those rebounds. Now she finds Kadeka underneath. Mismatch, but she misses the first attempt. Second try is good under the shorter Jasmine Smith. And Coach Pazella will call a timeout with 7.17 to go in the first half as Villanova opens up their largest lead of the day at four. That is textbook Mary Kadeka right there. She goes up for the shot underneath. Not there. Gets her own offensive rebound. Puts it back up for an easy two. Villanova up by four back after this on the Big East Digital Network. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Big East Women's Basketball Tournament presented by Jeep returns to Wintrust Arena in downtown Chicago, March 6th through 9th. All session tickets for the 2020 conference tournament are on sale now, starting at just $50 for tickets. Visit www.bigeast.com slash WBB tickets. Seton Hall and Villanova locked in a tight one. We expected it. It's the Big East, of course, and it's living up to the billing so far. Villanova's defense has been key so far. They have a four-point lead. Here's one of the things that's sticking out to me so far, Sean, is this rebound battle is about even right now. Villanova has 13, Seton Hall has 10. However, both teams are struggling under the offensive glass. Villanova only has two and Seton Hall only has one. So defensively, they are locked in both of these teams. However, offensively, they need to start getting some of their second chance points. So far, seven turnovers for Villanova, but the six they've turned over from Seton Hall have been the ones that have been the damage doers so far. Villanova on a 7-0 run. Smith tries to end it, but is short. Fight for the rebound. Hurley, he grabs it for the Wildcats. And Kadeka and Segrist, they haven't quite got going yet, but they're getting good looks, and I think Coach Peretta would take that all day long, trying to get his two leading scorers going. That's been a big key for them all season long, and Seaton trying to limit them as much as they can so then they can get their shooters going. Hurley, he, too strong. Faloxi has the board. Comes Maya Jackson, the hero from the 83-61 win over Xavier last time out. Faloxi underneath, nice move off the glass. Ends the 7-0 Nova run and Seton Hall's back within two. There's Karanji under the Jackson pressure. One of the keys, do not be afraid to use that glass. The backboard is there to help you. Herlihy, nice move inside. Used every step she could, but Smith has the rebound. Jackson had 25 points with seven of nine shooting from three. She finds Lewis here, that's too strong. And Segrist has the rebound. Pirates have been struggling from three so far. 0 of eight from trifecta so far. Here's Onkin. Trying to find Karanji, the sophomore. Baseline drive, break, kick out. Near side three-pointer for Monken is too strong. Faloxi with the rebound. Jackson, the Ohio native, finding Lewis. 
Jasmine Smith thought about a three, thinks better of it. Jackson's open, it's a three. Late contest, it's off the side of the backboard. And Villanova has it again. Great job breaking it down. Rather, it's a closing down the shooter there by Herlihy. Yet another great rebound, rebound from Seeger. She hasn't really been contested in getting those defensive rebounds. Now Onkin using a lot of the shot clock here. Herlihy. Kadeka almost lost it. Onkin has five to shoot. Seagrist double teamed. Onkin, they got to get it up. Two to shoot. Shot clock violation. Great defense from the Pirates. And not enough of a sense of urgency it felt like there from Villanova. Nobody really looked up at the shot clock. And Seagrist was hoping to get a foul on that last, when she tried to heave it up at that last second. But no foul called. Play on. Great defense by Alexis Lewis on the perimeter. Lauren Park Lane back in to run the show. The freshman for Seton Hall. Early in the season, talking to Coach Bizzelli, he said, you know, the reason she's out there is because of her confidence. She thinks she's the best player on the court every time she goes out there. And now she's starting to show you the signs that she can be one day. And she's kind of backing up the talk with her play so far this season as well. And how about that? I love it. She's 5'6". She is a little figure, but she has confidence that is imposing. Trying to find Elmore. Went between her legs that time. Another Seton Hall turnover. Karanji in transition, three-pointer is good. Sam Karanji from deep, and Villanova's lead is up to five, their largest of the game. That is something that is Harry Peretta, you have to be happy about. Karanji has had some open looks so far in this game, but she hasn't been taking them, and right there, she just had the confidence to go at it. For the one she has taken, she's two of two, six points. Park Lane answers with a three. Much needed for Seton Hall, their first made three. They're one of 10 now from deep, and the Pirates are back within two. That's gonna be a key going forward. Pirates have to start making those threes. Long from Segrist, Gadeka with the rebound. Great hustle, and she lays it in. Never gave up on the possession and gets two more for the Wildcats. On the other end, great hesitation by Samuels, almost threw it away. Great ball movement. Right back for a three, and it's good from Johnson. Great vision from Lauren Park Lane, and now Seton Hall's made two straight trifectas, and they're back within one. That goes back to Lauren Park Lane being such a great point guard and seeing the open play player finding her. Gadeka. Little feed into Segrist. Samuels forced her back out. Long three-pointer, far side, short from Karanji. Onkin's got the offensive rebound to Segrist, that's short. And Jackson has the rebound, Pirates looking to run. Johnson, back to Jackson, extra pass from Samuels. Jackson for three. Too strong, fight for the rebound, diving on the floor was Johnson. But Villanova comes out with it with Gadeka. Coming down on two minutes to play in what's been much more high-paced second quarter. And we're starting to see the threes fall for both teams as well. Eight to shoot for Villanova. Wager had it for a moment. Karanji has to look up. There's only three to shoot. Kadeka. Yes on a three as the shot clock expires. One of the things that we're seeing in Kadeka's game this season is her ability to shoot the, game, the three. That's one thing that she has been working on consistently all throughout her career, and now we're really seeing it come to life this year. On the other end, Samuels for the answer. Off right, Jackson with the weak side rebound, fighting to keep it alive, but she traveled. And it'll be Villanova ball, tough break for Jackson. Did everything right, just couldn't keep a pivot foot down as she kicked the ball out. And with a buck 36 to go in the half, Villanova gets the ball back. Karanji, right to Segrist, who goes to work on Samuels, but lost it. Great defense by Shadeen Samuels, but Segrist dives to get it back. Finds Wager, no good. Fight for the rebound, Wager has it again. Third chance for Villanova. Foul against Segrist, trying to get the ball back for a fourth time. How about that effort from 
Seegers. Talk about a player who is not afraid to put her body on the line for her team. She just went after it there. Almost found a way to get another possession on that trip for Villanova, but in the end, Seton Hall finds a way to hold firm. Great effort on both ends, but like you said, Seagrass looked dead to rights, looked going for that ball and found a way to grab it between two Seton Hall defenders. We saw Coach Peretta giving her some coaching as she hopped off onto the bench after that. Park Lane on the drive, under a minute to go in the half, and a turnover. Jackson couldn't quite find Park Lane, and there's 54 seconds to go in the half as Grace Lang, the junior from Newark, Delaware, comes in for her first minutes for Villanova, number three in the road navy blue. Bridget Herlihy dribbles it up five points for Herlihy. Has been some of the role players who've been chipping in. Karanji has six as well for Villanova. She has the ball now. Almost lost a good defense by Barbara Johnson. Park Lane over to help. Out of bounds, it'll stay with Villanova. Wildcats have 10 to shoot with 33.2 left in the first half. And that's one of the things that you can see this Villanova is missing of, of their role players is Raven James, who hasn't been in because she's in foul trouble. And she's one of those role players, as Harry Peretta has said, that she has been starting to step up. You've seen her game continue to grow. And we haven't been able to see her as of recent because of foul trouble. Villanova's got three to shoot. Karanji shot puts it towards the bucket, couldn't get it to go. Elmore has it. Shot clock is turned off. Pirates could hold for the final shot here if they want to. And that's exactly what they'll do. Park Lane will reset. 10 seconds to go in the first half with Villanova up by four. Down to five, Park Lane gets a screen from Samuels. Two seconds on the clock, the layup, no good at the buzzer. And that's the end of an entertaining first half here inside Walsh Gym. Well, it's gone according to plan so far for Harry Peretta and the Villanova Wildcats. They lead by four at the break on the Big East Digital Network presented by SOFA. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. What is a Villanovan in 30 seconds? Well, Villanovans aim high. Top 50 National University high. We think fast and stay connected. V's up. Villanovans think deeply, push boundaries, and go, go, go! Still with me? We climb corporate ladders and these ladders. This campus is our home, but you can find us almost anywhere. Villanovans have big hearts to solve even bigger problems, and we celebrate together. Ignite change. Go Nova. Thank you the weekly women's basketball show hosted by my partner Megan Caffrey and Ashley Leotis breaking down everything in Big East women's hoops. You can catch all new episodes of Fast Break during the season every Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. on the Big East Twitter. He's right at the start of conference play. Yeah, it's very crucial. My reigning player of the week, Jalen Agnew from Creighton. Um, you know, this season in the Big East is going to be very competitive. And so we knew we had to start out strong. And so getting those two road victories were a good stepping stone um, for hopefully the rest of the season. In your most recent game and your win over Villanova, you scored 31 points. That's the second time this season that you've had a game where you scored at least 30 or more points. When you get into such an offensive rhythm, how would you describe that? Um, I don't know. It's... Um, you kind of can't tell at first, then and, and all your teammates are hyping you up, and you're like, all right, well, I guess I should just keep going. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, it's just it's, um, really cool. And um, like I said, my teammates always hype me up, and so it's um, it's fun like hearing from them um, that you're doing well. And so, um, yeah, so it's been it's been fun. How were your teammates able to hype you up in your game against Georgetown, where you didn't score the bulk of your points until the second half, where you had 20 of your 23 points? Mm -hmm, yeah, um, they told me to stay aggressive, them and the coaches, um, you know, especially from the coaching staff, they're like, you know, sometimes we need you to be the one to start our offense, get our offense going, and so 
um, just to be use that in kind of like an unselfish way and like to when I start to get going that hopefully everyone else has to get going as well. I remember talking to your head coach Jim Flannery back at Big East Media Day and he was saying one of his hopes for you this season is to just have fun. Mm -hmm. We're two games into the conference season but you've had a lot of basketball that you've played so mm -hmm. far. How much fun are you having? A lot of fun. This is a super fun group. Um, actually we, we started this new thing this year um, and so I don't know if you know about the Chicago Bears and how they have their club dub um, thing after they win and we kind of started doing our own version of that. And so after every win, we um, we have like lights and we turn we turn the lights off and we have our own like strobe lights type thing and we play music and we like dance after every win. So that's kind of been super fun to just enjoy every win, especially like we've had a couple ugly ones like Flan has said. And so just to you know, wins are hard to come by, and so to get those wins and just enjoy it and keep that going. Whose idea was it to start that? Um, actually Olivia Elgers, because she's from Chicago, and so she um, she knew all about that, and so she's like, I think it'd be a super fun thing. Um, to do so she took it to the coaches and they thought it was awesome and so we've been doing that so far and it's been super fun. Jalen you're one of three seniors on the team this season you also lead your team in scoring how would you describe your leadership and your ability to really when all of your teammates are relying on you? Yeah um I our coaches talk about or talk to me about being more of a vocal leader um and I I'm not so great at that I like to lead more by action kind of and so um, I think that's where um, I've done better at. It would be the um, action and um, kind of, you know, the, like Olivia is great at the vocal lead and, and so is Temi. And so um, they kind of take that side of it. And I, um, I'm more of like the leading by action type thing. Um, and so that's kind of where I kind of start, um, start in my leadership, I would say. I love that, Jalen. Thank you very much for joining me and good luck this weekend. Thank you so much. Now, welcome in. What is a Villanovan in 30 seconds? Well, Villanovans aim high. Top 50 National University high. We think fast and stay connected. V's up. Villanovans think deeply, push boundaries, and go, go, go! Still with me? We climb corporate ladders in these ladders. This campus is our home, but you can find us almost anywhere. Villanovans have big hearts to solve even bigger problems, and we celebrate together. Ignite change. Go Nova. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor of research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you.
The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Halftime here in South Orange. Sean St. Jacques, Megan Caffrey back here with you on the Big East Digital Network. Villanova leading Seton Hall 30 to 26 at the break as the kids are getting their chance to make some shots during the halftime interval. Let's take a look at the halftime stats so far between, or the highlights and the stats between these two so far. Shadeen Samuels played well early on on both ends for Seton Hall and was able to make a pretty solid impact as you would expect. She's leading the team in scoring right now with six points. However, for Seton Hall, the difference in, that you want to see in the second half is for them to really get their three-point shooting up. Wasn't a problem for Villanova. They knocked down <laughs> six triples and they've got a four-point lead. And a lot of it has to do with Mary Gadeka. She has been key underneath. She is the only player on the court who is scoring in double figures. They've gotten the two strong players involved, Segris and Gadeka, but the role players for Villanova have also made an impact as well. And you're looking to see maybe Raven James get a little bit more involved in the second half. She'll probably come back on to start it and see if she can get some of the buckets that she has been getting as of recent. Desiree Elmore with a bucket there. Pirates have played solid defense despite being down by four points. And that's one thing that is key for this Pirate team. They want to get as many defensive stops, steals as you see right there by Shadeen Samuels, and get those points in transition. That's been their bread and butter so far this season. Samuels, again, has been so strong on both ends. But what do the Pirates need to do to be a little bit more efficient on the offensive end, do you think? I think it just comes down to trying to knock down some three-point shooting. They're shooting 17% from three right now. That's not average for them. Usually they're right around the 30% margin that they're going to be shooting from. So you need Alexis Lewis especially to start knocking down some of those shots if she's going to continue to take them. It's been a close, tight fight in the first half so far. Take a look at the stats so far. 39% shooting from the field for Villanova, 35 for Seton Hall. But like we mentioned, the big difference, like you mentioned, Megan, 6 of 17 from deep for Villanova, just 2 of 12 from Seton Hall. They were back-to-back -back threes at the end of the first half. 10 tur turnovers to nine, Seton Hall minus one there. But Villanova seems to have made the turnovers hurt a little bit more than Seton Hall has so far. It seems that they just start to happen a little bit at the inopportune times for Seton Hall. Right when they think that there, something's going to happen, Villanova has been able to get those steals and get those blocks where they need to. Villanova with a four-point lead at the break. More to come on the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi. is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with the big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic.
What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. The basketball world lost an absolute titan this week. NBA Commissioner Emeritus David Stern passed away at the age of 77 on Wednesday during Stern's legendary run as commissioner of the NBA. He helped found the WNBA with Big East Commissioner Val Ackerman, who served as the league's first president. The statement from Val Ackerman, obviously heartfelt towards David Stern, a moment of profound grief in the sports industry and the basketball world as we mourn a titan, an innovator, a perfectionist, a task maker, a role model, a mentor, and most of all, a dear friend. Val Ackerman's thoughts on David Stern, who passed away at the age of 77. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. Inside historic Walsh Gymnasium, Sean St. Jack, Megan Caffrey, second half between Seton Hall and Villanova about to get underway. Pirates coming in, looking for their third straight Big East win after a really strong road trip where they came back from 15 down to beat Butler and it took care of Xavier. Now they're getting a dogfight from the Wildcats. And I think this Wildcats team is pleased with how things have gone in the first half. They've been able to keep the pace of this game under control. They've been able to run through their offense, setting up those screens so that they can curl get the ball underneath the basket like how they want to do. Wildcats have made their threes in the first half. They've been able to force some turnovers as one of the big changes. Raven James with two fouls, missed a lot of the first half. She's back in. Number 10 for Villanova as the second half gets underway, but a turnover begins things in period number three for Villanova as Park Lane brings it back down. Referees blow the whistle to stop play with 9.43 left. In the third, it looks like there was a bit of a clock issue. Not sure if it was with the shot clock or the game clock, but we're back underway. Brief stoppage. Seton Hall has it for their first possession offensively here in the third quarter, trailing by four. Lauren Park Lane controls for the Pirates. Five points for the freshman. She'll fire a quick trigger three. That's too strong. Fight for the rebound. Elmore tips it out to Samuels, and Seton Hall can reset. Lewis out to Johnson for three, that's short. Weak side rebound for James, and here comes Villanova. Herlihy, who had five first half points, underneath to Gadega. How well executed was that? And Villanova has a six point lead. Perfect execution, that right there is exactly what Villanova wants to be doing on their offense. They trust Gadega underneath, they get her, she delivers. Park Lane around an Elmore screen. Ball movement over towards Barbara Johnson. Elmore towards the elbow. Step back baseline, jumper is good. How smooth is that? She can do so much on the offensive end. Found some space and cuts the deficit back down to four as Seton Hall ramps up the pressure. James finds a gap, rejected by Elmore. Pirates running, Park Lane. Just short on the on the layup. And the rebound by Onkin. Here's Herlihy. And James will reset for Villanova. James the junior from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. So there's a foul, I think, off the ball. And it's gonna go against Alexis Lewis. 
first personal and the team's first of the third. Uh, Raven James from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Same hometown as Chris Jenkins, Villanova legend. <laughs> I think uh, Wildcat fans know a little bit about him and North Carolina fans should probably put their hands over their ears. Gadeka for three. That's no good. Lewis has the rebound. That's where we're still seeing Gadeka's game develop. She's not afraid to take those shots, but she still isn't quite there yet. As she wants to. Uncontested put back by Shadeen Samuels. Nobody blocked her out. Lewis was too strong on the three, but Shadeen Samuels was able to walk to a layup that time. Ankin. No points, but has seven rebounds. And she finds Herlihy, who is too strong on the three. Fight for the rebound. It's out of bounds, and it'll go Seton Hall's way with 7.24 to go in the third quarter. Pirates again getting open looks, but two of 15 from downtown so far in this game. And that's, well, music to Villanova's ears. It's exactly what they were hoping for heading into this game. Johnson. Trying to drive past James, who stood her ground. Samuels in the corner, pump fakes. Elmore held onto it. Eight to shoot for Judson. Couldn't quite find it on the baseline. Lewis, the offensive board. And Park Lane will reset. How about that effort from Shadeen Samuels, also there underneath, to kind of kick it out to Lewis? Samuels, three, far corner, too strong. Onkin has eight rebounds for Villanova. How big have those been? on the defensive end to try to limit Seton Hall's second chance opportunities. Herlihy for three. It's good. Wide open look for Bridget Herlihy. And she is up to five points now for Villanova. And they have a five point lead. Make that eight points actually after the triple. Johnson, baseline Elmore, great find. Samuels past James. Trying to dump it inside to Lewis, who was in, in traffic. Diving forward is Samuels and James. And a foul against Shanine Samuels going over the top of Raven James for the loose ball. First personal against Shanine Samuels. And the hustle plays for Villanova. We saw it in the first half. Segrist diving on the floor a couple of times, and Raven James comes on and keeps the Vill Villanova DNA in full effect. And you saw her really being tentative on defense there. She knows she's in foul trouble. She didn't want to get too close to anybody, but then goes aggressively, gets the ball back for her team. Another second chance after the tap out by Gadeka. Segrist, second try. Doesn't make the mistake this time. Wide open three, and Villanova has an eight point lead. Maddie Segrist has taken her chances extremely well today. And Villanova has an eight point lead only for a moment though, as Desiree Elmore answers with a free throw line jumper. And Seton Hall tries to ramp it up with some three quarter court pressure. Well, Villanova did well to break through. Gadeka lays it in. Poised play from the young Wildcats. Samuels goes right inside, draws the foul. It was going to go one way or the other, and Shadeen Samuels will head to the free throw line for two. Third foul on Raven James, who took the contact. That's something to watch with five minutes to go, just over five minutes to go in the third quarter. Samuels misses the first free throw. Now the question is for the Wildcats, how much longer is Raven James gonna stay in in foul trouble? She's been really key for this Wildcats team when she's been on the court. However, the foul trouble is something that you don't wanna mess with. One of two at the line for Samuels. She's up to nine points. Elmore leads the Pirates with 10. Gadeka and Segrist have combined for 26 so far in this one to pace Villanova. And this is the part of the Villanova strategy that could be key with a lead. They can really use the clock now and start to try to control the game. Herlihy in and out. That would have been a big bucket 
to push the Nova lead to nine. Instead, the Pirates come the other way with it with Elmore. Elmore kicks it out. Jackson near side, short on the three. Fight for the rebound. Saved in the end by Johnson. Elmore underneath with it, and it's a jump ball. And it will stay with Seton Hall. What a job by Barbara Johnson to dive and save it, to save a Seton Hall possession. And that'll head us into a timeout. 4.25 to go in the third. Villanova with a seven point lead on enemy territory on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room, people, for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that can help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. Big East Women's Basketball Tournament presented by Jeep returns to Trust Arena in downtown Chicago March 6th through the 9th. All session tickets for the 2020 Conference Tournament are on sale now. Starting at just $50 for tickets, visit www.bigeast.com slash WBB tickets. Good to see these two at some point down the road in the Big East Tournament. Long way to go, of course, and a long way to go in this game. Four and a half to play. In the third, Villanova with a 40 to 33 lead over Seton Hall, and the Pirates just can't buy a bucket from three right now. No, they certainly can't, Sean. They're two of 17 from three, and that's one thing that they're not afraid to shoot the three-pointer, and they've had open looks. They keep going for it, but just nothing seems to be going their way right now. The best stretch for Seton Hall when, was when they made a couple of threes. They were able to extend the lead, but since then, Villanova's pace, their defense, and they're closing out on the shooters have really seemed to dictate the passage of play. And the defensive rebounds continue to be a story here. Onkin specifically for Villanova. Cameron Onkin, the Lafayette, Indiana native, has been huge. Eight rebounds on her own. And they've all been in pretty key parts to stop Seton Hall possessions. Out of the timeout, Elmore one-on-one -on -one missed it. Fight for the rebound. Tapped back up by Shadeen Samuels, who was fouled going up with it and will head to the free throw line for two shots. To your point, Sean, Sean Onkin has really been impressing me so far in today's game. Two free throws for Samuels. Just want to note, uh, excuse me, Gadeka's second foul there. Two free throws. Raven James for a moment thought that might have been on her instead it is Gadeka. Two foul shots upcoming for Samuels. And she's in and out on the first. It's times where Seton Hall has found themselves in these situations this season. And I hear Coach Bazella say it a lot. It's just, you got to keep shooting. Got to keep putting them up. We're getting the looks. Just got to knock them down. And if Seton Hall can, they are more than, cap more than capable enough to getting back into this game. And that's what Villanova's trying to avoid at the moment with the way they've been playing. James fouled by Park Lane. Got a little too aggressive. Only her first personal, third on the team in the third quarter. And Park Lane knew immediately that she had just gotten her hands a little too close in there. Here's Herlihy. Nice pass out to Onkin. And Gadeka will reset. 
Erlihy. Seven to shoot for Villanova. Inside, Segrist kind of just flipped that one up. Fight for the rebound. Segrist has it. Shot clock should have reset. It hit the rim. Villanova stopped because of the buzzer going off, but it should be a new shot clock. Or at least, excuse me, reset to 20 seconds, I should say. But because the whistle blew, that might change things here. Problem is, is it wasn't reset right away. And the fact that it led to the whistle being blown means the officials have to kind of figure this out. If it does go to the arrow, it is still Villanova basketball. So small, no harm, no foul there, but the arrow would go back to Seton Hall. Exactly, and, and that's tough there because Segrist was right underneath the bucket to get her own offensive rebound. Would have saved the possession for Villanova, and before the whistle blew, looked like they might have had a chance to score the bucket. And while the officials figure out clock and shot clock here, the two teams will reconvene. Villanova with a six-point lead. Pirates have come in. They were red hot coming off the road trip. Coach Bazella told us before the game a lot of confidence from winning two straight road games. Seton Hall struggled so much on the road last season, blowing a number of double-digit leads, losing on a couple of buzzer beaters in Big East play as well. They felt really good coming from behind at Butler and then blowing out Xavier, a team that is a little down this year, but they were able to show the confidence in that game. Take a look at this last passage of play. And Segrist goes up. It definitely hit the rim. But then right there as she went inside, and Ankin would have had a wide open layup there before the whistle went. And play was stopped by the officials. So kind of just examining who's going to get possession here. Does the arrow have to change? And obviously we're going to get a, a, a fresh shot clock regardless. Of course, it would be 20 seconds under the new rules. But it could be an interesting little shift in momentum here when it could have been an eight-point lead for Villanova. And you could see the confusion on Seager's right. face when she heard yeah. that whistle, thinking it was a foul happening somewhere, because she thought, okay, now we've got it, we've got the opportunity to reset here. So just a little bit of an unknown of what was going on there. Both coaches have come with the officials. Jeffrey Smith, Nakisha Thompson, and Mark Resch, our officials today, are explaining, were explaining what happened there. So the shot clock has been reset to 18 seconds. The arrow stays the same. And it's Villanova ball, so the officials reviewed it and got the call right. Nice job by them. And Villanova can reset. Inbound to James. Elbow jumper out of the timeout is no good. Or I should say out of the stoppage. And Desiree Elmore has the rebound. Shadeen Samuels hesitates, drives inside the kick. I think she was trying to find Elmore, went all the way through. Extra pass to Johnson, and a much needed three for Seton Hall. And the Pirates are back within three. Johnson is up to eight points. She was wide open right there and had the confidence to just drain a three. Johnson's made, made two of the three threes for Seton Hall today. And Seekers was fouled by Johnson underneath the basket. Johnson makes the three and then commits the foul. Second on her. Villanova will make a quick change here as Karanji comes back in for Villanova, giving Cameron Onkin a rest. 3.04 to play in the third. Villanova up by three. Kadeka to Segrist. It's a long two, in and out. Elmore with the rebound. Park Lane. Johnson thought about it. Elmore traveled. Second time that's happened to her today. Same exact move on the catty corner edges of the court. And it's a turnover for Seton Hall at a pretty inopportune time again. That's something that you just want to be a little bit more careful about. Clean it up maybe because she saw, you could see the confusion on her face thinking that that wasn't a travel. Definitely the shuffle of the feet, though, before she put the ball on the floor. It looked like a carbon copy of the travel from the first half. Underneath, Segrist is fouled. Going up with it, Park Lane picks up her second. 
And it'll be Manny Sebris, the redshirt freshman, heading to the free throw line for Villanova with 2.29 to go in the third quarter. Faloxi in for Elmore. You do have to love that defensive effort coming from Lauren Park Lane. Five, six, going up against Maddie Seegers to a six. One has a little bit of height advantage on her there, but that did not stop her. No fear for Lauren Park Lane. Yeah, no, no fear at all. And I mentioned earlier, she loves to take the contact on both ends and she is extremely aggressive with the basketball in her hands and defensively there. Segris makes both free throws. Five point swing after Elmore traveled on the previous possession. Johnson who's had the hot hand, short this time. Fight for the rebound, tapped out, but a foul against Shadeen Samuels will give it back to Villanova. Just her second with 2.12 remaining in the third, but it just seems like in the big momentum changing moments when Seton Hall's had a chance to maybe tie the game or go on a little bit of a run, Villanova's made a bucket, they've gotten a defensive stop, or Seton Hall's made a mistake. And that's where it's not that it's the, the pace of the game as both of these coaches were concerned about, but yeah, it's just these little tiny mistakes or lapses that you need to clean up on because that can lead to bigger moments in the game. Seton Hall does have plenty of depth, but the other part of it is the depth hasn't been making shots either, at least from three. Villanova's defense deserves a lot of credit for that. Two minutes to go in the third. Villanova back up to a six point lead after Seton Hall had a chance to tie it a couple of possessions ago. Here's Johnson for the Pirates. Faloxi, the ball was almost thrown away. And Seton Hall lost track of the shot clock. It's another turnover. And by the time it got to Maya Jackson, she had no chance of getting the shot away. So Alexis Lewis comes back in. Seton Hall just looks a little disjointed at the offensive end right now. But it's also coupled with the fact that Villanova is really clamping down. That's the big strength to their game is their defense. Yeah, a tough possession there for the Pirates right there. They're not used to working down the shot clock that low, and it looked like they just couldn't really get their play into motion there. A lot of just stalled ball movement. They couldn't seem to get anything going. They didn't have to go in the third. James underneath the Seekers with a bit of a mismatch, and she takes full advantage in off the glass, and Villanova's lead is back up to eight. Segrist is up to 15 points for Villanova. That's a strength in her game right there. You put the ball on the ground, one dribble, turn into your shoulder and put it up for an easy lay. Park Lane with the kick, Jackson inside. Floater comes up empty. Lewis is there though for the important stick back. And under a minute to play in the third, Seton Hall claws it back to six. Karanji with 50 seconds to go in the third. Throws it away. Faloxi comes up with it, three on two for Seton Hall. Jackson all the way. No good. Just couldn't knock down that circus layup with the left hand, and Villanova has it back. Hurley. Yes. Clutch three pointer for Bridget Hurley, and the senior knocks the Villanova lead back as high as it's been all day at nine points. And Hurley is in double figures with 11. Shot clock turned off for the Pirates and it's thrown away. James for Villanova is fouled going up with it. Two free throws for Villanova. With 5.7 to play in the third. Third foul now on Lauren Park Lane, all coming in the third quarter. And Villanova can add on and make it their largest lead of the game. And Sean, going back to your point about Hurley and Villanova looking for these role players to really come to fruition, she's only scored in double digits three times this season. This is her fourth double digit scoring account now, so maybe this is a little bit of a coming out party for her today. First free throw from James was good. Second is no good. Five seconds for Seton Hall here at the end of the quarter. Johnson, can she get it up in time? No, and she was blocked anyway. 
Pirates were looking for a foul. It didn't come, and that's the end of the third quarter. What a finish to the third for Villanova. They take a 10-point lead into the fourth, their largest of the game on the Big East Digital Network. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power gun. The Big East Way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Back here inside historic Walsh Gym, Villanova with a 10-point lead as we head to the fourth quarter in South Orange. Let's take a look at the upcoming Big East basketball slate. Had a good one so far today between Seton Hall and Villanova. Up, upcoming games for both teams. Obviously, we've had such a nice slate these last couple of games, but upcoming, of course, Seton Hall has a tough stretch coming up, but you know, Villanova St. John's coming up for them as well. The, the Big East keeps getting tougher for them. Also, obviously, Providence and DePaul. St. John's playing Georgetown on Friday as well, and obviously a great slate coming up. Seton Hall gonna be tested. Villanova gonna be tested going to Queens, and obviously DePaul, everyone trying to knock off the Blue Demons. And a great week of weekend of action for the Big East. Two of the nine Big East women's basketball games are being televised on national television. Number 16, DePaul at Providence tonight on FS2, and then Villanova at St. and St. John's on CBS SN on Sunday afternoon. Lots to look forward to this weekend and the rest of this week for Big East women's basketball. And hopefully a lot to look forward to in this fourth quarter. Villanova trying to add on to a 10-point lead, their largest of the game. That ball knocked away by Johnson, a turnover for Villanova. And Seton Hall gets it right back to start the fourth. Might have been a foul there on Karanji reaching in on Johnson, not called. Johnson will reset things over to Lauren Park Lane. Seton Hall's offense just has not been clicking for long stretches in this game. Can they turn it around here in the fourth? They've got seven to shoot, and Park Lane travels. Third blueprint turnover there, where it's been shuffling of the feet on the perimeter for Seton Hall. And look now, the Pirates have turned the ball over 14 times in this game. Villanova's taken advantage, 16 to seven. Villanova leads and points off turnovers. And those are the types of turnovers that you really don't want to have. Those are just a little bit messy there. You want to keep it cleaner and not get those turnovers. It'll come at tough times for the Pirates as well. They've been trying to cut into the Villanova lead. Eight to shoot for Karanji. Segrist back to Karanji. In and out on the three, she was wide open. She's hit a couple of them so far today. Two on one, Jackson to the layup. She knocks it down off a great feed from Park Lane. How about that? The two freshman sensation guards a little bit back and forth between the two of them. That's great to see. A foul after the layup. Lauren Park Lane, and just like that, just mentioned it earlier, thought, felt like just a couple seconds ago she picked up her first foul. Now she's up to four fouls for Seton Hall as Philoxy gets a breather for the Hall. 
to take another look. Great pass, no look pretty much from Park Lane to find Jackson in transition. It's back to eight with eight and a half to play. Segrist, who's been a star again for Villanova, moving the ball around. Herlihy had her pocket picked by Lewis. And Gadeka couldn't quite swipe it from Park Lane. Jackson for three. In and out. Fight for the rebound, Samuels has it. Johnson on the drive. No good, but a foul is called. Boy, the Pirates are fighting for everything right now. That was a huge offensive rebound for the Pirates on that possession. You're able to get it back to you. That's something that they need, and now they need to see if they can use this momentum to try and shift it a little bit. Eight minutes on the dot to go in the fourth quarter. They're looking for president for a comeback. Pirates were down by as many as 15 in the third quarter on the road at Butler. And Coach Mazzella told us before the game that he didn't really have to talk to his players. You know, before the fourth, it was really his talk with a couple of his assistants that kind of made the difference. Talking with Marissa Flagg and Lauren DeFalco, kind of just talking about going zone in the fourth to kind of try to make it tough on Butler. And then the final 11 seconds where Barbara Johnson ended up making the game winning shot. Just about, you know what, we're gonna press. You know, it doesn't matter what Butler's going to do. We're gonna keep doing what we want to do. Just go press. They did, they got the seal, they made the bucket, and they pulled off the comeback in the end. They're looking to turn up the intensity here a little bit after they cut it down to six. Gadeka for three. In and out. Jackson has the rebound. Over to Johnson, Lewis. Park Lane in the near side corner. Lewis for three. Yes! And Walsh comes to life for the first time today. It's a three-point game with seven and a half to go, and the Pirate pressure ramps up even more. Timeout Villanova. 7.23 to play inside Walsh. Huge three-pointer from Alexis Lewis. Pirates trying to claw back into it on the Big East Digital Network after a big three-pointer from Alexis Lewis, the transfer from Iona. More to come in the fourth after this. What is a Villanovan in 30 seconds? Well, Villanovans aim high. Top 50 National University high. We think fast and stay connected. V's up. Villanovans think deeply, push boundaries, and go, go, go! go! Still with me? We climb corporate ladders and these ladders. This campus is our home, but you can find us almost anywhere. Villanovans have big hearts to solve even bigger problems, and we celebrate together. Ignite change, go Nova. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. Well, if you've enjoyed this game, and I can't imagine you haven't, you're gonna wanna see these teams play again. A lot more Big East to play. So take a look at the upcoming schedule, starting with the Villanova Wildcats. One and one coming into this game, and we mentioned nationally televised game at St. John's coming up, but then they go back home to play Butler, Xavier, and then more Big Five action against Penn before they welcome in the Hoyas. The Wildcats trying to get a road win here, and we talk about it so often, just how hard road wins are to get in the Big East Conference, and we're seeing it here, right here today. Seton Hall coming off of two straight road wins. Both were pretty hard fought. The Hoyas come in next, and then a tough test at DePaul, at Marquette, always a tough road swing going out to Chicago and then Milwaukee before the Jays and the Friars come to town towards the end of the month. And when you look at that DePaul Marquette swing, Marquette this year, it, they do look a little bit different. They graduated all five starters from last season. They have a new head coach in Megan Duffy, but they had an excellent non-conference and they are really a talented team. And the DePaul Blue Demons are still the team to beat in the conference. They've shown it so far too, especially in the early going, but also in the non-conference schedule as well. 
Coach Bruno always makes it tough on the rest of the conference, doesn't he? <laughs> yes, he does. And I think the important thing for teams is in this stretch, you have to remember that they played Sunday, Tuesday. Now they have the Friday, yep. Sunday swing. These players are exhausted. That has been a lot of basketball. Villanova has it out of the timeout, down by three. Herlihy to a cutting Onkin. Fouled on the pass, I believe. She was trying to kick it out. Onkin has only taken a couple of shots to, so far today. And Janine Samuels picks up her third personal as you take another look. Looked by the naked eye that she may have been trying to go up with it, but clearly was trying to kick it out. And it will be baseline out on the inbounds play for Villanova. Ball in to Sebrist. And controlled by Karanji. Just over seven minutes to play. Karanji guarded tightly by Lewis. Segrist back to Karanji. Five to shoot for Villanova. Karanji, what a move! Inside and the layup goes. She spread up the defense and found the gap. She saw that open lane and took it. There was no stopping her there. What a ball fake to open up the space for herself. Jackson at the top of the key. Johnson for three. Short, and Onkin has her ninth rebound. And then a jump ball. Seton Hall gets the possession. Alexis Lewis gets her hands on it and gives Seton Hall a second opportunity. This is gonna be a big possession for Seton Hall here, looking to capitalize on the second opportunity. 6.29 to go, but like you said, Megan, these are all crucial possessions. Seton Hall down by as many as 10. They've cut it down to five. Just gets that in. Jackson to Samuels. Jasmine Smith, top of the key, Johnson. Over to Samuels. Jackson around to Samuel Shereen, trying to maneuver through the Villanova defense that's been stout for a lot of this game. Jackson, extra pass, five to shoot. Tough shot by Johnson is no good. Fight for the rebound. Herla, he has it, and she saves it to Karanji. Another great defensive stop by Villanova. And now Villanova can use a little bit more clock if they want to here. Karanji, though, will fire. It's short. Fight for the rebound. Second ball is won by Alexis Lewis. I felt like Villanova maybe could have taken a couple extra ticks off the clock there, but Karanji was open and took the chance. Lewis, far side, in and out on the three. And the rebound is Segrist. 15 points and eight rebounds for Maddie Segrist. She's now got a three on the near side. Two strong, Johnson with the rebound. Pirates out running here, three on two if they hurry. Jackson for three, they need it, and they get it. Maya Jackson has seven, and the Pirates are back within two with 4.50 to play. Absolutely a great effort here by the Pirates, starting with Barbara Johnson. She is one of the most athletic players on the floor today. Kadeka. Out to Karanji, back to Gadeka. Segrist finds Herlihy, a cutting Gadeka. Yes, off the glass. Great response by Villanova, and their lead is back up to four. Four twenty to go. Who's going to step up for Seton Hall down the stretch? Smith on the kick. Jackson on the drive, and she was fouled. And it was going up with it. Two free throws for Maya Jackson. Smart play by Maya Jackson there. She goes for the three, sees it's not going to be there, drives it in, gets the foul. Timeout on the floor with 4.12 to go. Jackson to the line for two. When we come back, Pirates trying to claw it back over the Cats inside Walsh. We're all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. 
When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with a victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the newest director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that can help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. Seton Hall trailing by four against Villanova on the Big East Digital Network. Big shot here from Maya Jackson, a much needed trifecta for the Pirates. And that one was pretty. She is a great three-point shooter. She's shooting 47.6% from three, having a little bit of difficulty today, but that went in perfectly right there. Villanova, their defense has been huge today. Seton Hall defensively as stout, but it's come down to shot making and Villanova from three has been and it's been where they've made the difference They're shooting 32 percent pirates shooting just 21 percent from deep that's really been the difference but despite all that seton hall can make it a one possession game at the free throw line maya jackson seven points on the day from the ohio native and she misses the first at 25 in the win over xavier last time out in cincinnati this one's big, trying to cut it to a one possession game. She makes it. Eight points for Jackson. 53-50, Villanova leads with 4.10 to go, and Seton Hall will pressure them up the court. Villanova's done well handling it so far. This time, though, they turn it over. Tipped away and taken by Desiree Elmore. Seton Hall has had one other chance to tie it in the fourth. They turned it over. Can they get a good look here? It's their star, Shadeen Samuels to Smith. Jackson to tie it. No good. Fight for the rebound. Samuels has it. Smith, rather to Johnson, and she hits it. Barbara Johnson knocks it down. It's a one-point game with three and a half to go. More pirate pressure. and was pressuring Onkin. Herlihy with it at the top of the key. Segrist, baseline. Elbow jumper, good from Gadeka, And that's a big shot for Villanova. Back to a three-point game. Gadeka has 18 points to lead all scorers. Under three to play. Timeout, Tony Bazella and Seton Hall. 30-second timeout, we'll stay right here. Trying to catch our breath here, 2.58 to go. Sean St. Jacques, Megan Caffrey here with you on the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi. What we expected to be a hard-nosed game. Gadeka has stepped up for Villanova. We expected that, so is Seacrest, but it's been the role players for Villanova. Herlihy specifically with 11 points that have really helped steady Villanova's ship offensively. Those role makers really have steadied the ship, Sean, but in these clutch, these opportune moment, moments, Villanova still does go back to their trusty two-headed monster in Mary Gadeka and Maddie Segris. Mary Gadeka with that last bucket right there. She has that confidence and that poise in those big moments to put one up. It's going to be interesting to see what the Pirates draw up here. Haven't really had a hot shooter in this game so far. Maya Jackson's been taking the big shots the last couple of possessions. Johnson will inbound it to Jackson. Just under three to play. Pirates down by three. This is Desiree Elmore. 
Driving and kicking. Johnson near side. Drives, shoots, short. Fight for the rebound. Seton Hall has it after it was tipped out by Raven James. Smith to tie it. Too strong. And it's Gadeka with the rebound for Villanova. Jasmine Smith hadn't made a bucket all game, not afraid. Could have made the biggest shot of the season so far for the Pirates there, but it's too strong. Herlihy had it bobbled. Gets it back from Onkin. Onkin hasn't made a shot all day. Too strong, and Johnson has the rebound. Couple of players who haven't scored yet. Trying to be the hero. Elmore with two to play. Baseline, thought better of it. Back out to Jackson. Jackson drives and is blocked by Gadeka. Seton Hall ball with seven to shoot. Lauren Park laid back in for Jasmine Smith. And Villanova will call a timeout with 1.47 remaining. Another 30 second timeout. Edge of your seat stuff inside Walsh Gym. The tough part for Coach Bazella has to be who do you draw it up for? Do you go to your star? Do you go to Shadeen Samuels? It's still only a three point game. You have 147 to go, seven to shoot. Or do you try to find a three point shooter here? That's exactly my thought, Sean. It, it, no one has the hot hand today. So, what do you do here? Do you go with your steady Eddie in Shadeen Samuels? She's been having a difficult time with the pressure that they have been putting her on her. So, it's going to be really interesting to see what they plan to do out of this. And Seton Hall doesn't necessarily need a three. That might yep. be the tiebreaker as to what they decide to do. But then boy, they call the trusty number 24 of Shadeen Samuels. Desiree Elmore has had her moments today as well. Both of them with 10 points. Pirates have seven to shoot. They go right to Elmore. Who scores? Amazing execution by Elmore there over the left, over the right, and in. Barely took any time off the clock as well. It's a one-point game. More pirate pressure. Raven James controls with 1.30 to play. Gadeka. James thought about it, fires, it's good! Raven James with a huge three-pointer for Villanova and the Wildcats lead by four. Coming down on a minute to play. Elmore with the answer, it's too short. Onkin with the rebound, and there's under a minute to go. Up ahead to Segrist. She's able to just control it after deflected off of Shadeen Samuels. Big possession here, potentially, for Villanova. Raven James controls. And Coach Harry Beretta will call a timeout with 40.5 to go and his team in the driver's seat after a clutch three from Raven James. Talk about a clutch three, and now the Villanova Wildcats are gonna try and work this shot clock down and get every bit of eight seconds out of it as they can. They wanna make it as long of an eight seconds that they can. Last time Seton Hall beat Villanova, to go back to 2016. Wildcats trying to make it get another win inside Walsh Gym. After sweeping the series last season, Seton Hall, after winning two straight on the road, would fall to two and one if they can't pull off a, a bit of a miracle here. And they'd be tied with Villanova in the standings in the early goings of Big East Conference play, but still a long time to go, 40 and a half, but Villanova has the ball and eight to shoot. Early right into Segrist. Gadeka only has four to shoot. She's in some trouble. Herlihy. Puts it up, it's short, and Samuels has the rebound. Pirates have to hurry, down by four with 30 seconds to go. Samuels drives, missed it, put back up, no good. Samuels again is fouled with 18 seconds to go. Boy, the fight from Elmore and Samuels to get that back up there. 
extremely impressive and par for the course really with Seton Hall with the way they play. Two big free throws here for Shadeen Samuels. Today, she is four of six from the line. And misses the first yet again for the third straight trip. Well, this one's a must. Trying to get it back to a one possession game. Pirates will have to try to foul or at least get a steal. Oh, there was a lane violation. Samuels made it anyway. So the point counts. Early, he went a little too early there. But it, in the end, didn't affect the shot, at least enough for it to miss. And it is 58-55 with 18 seconds to go. There's a timeout. Both teams will talk things over. It seems pretty straightforward, right? You try to steal it. If you can't, you go to, for the, you go to foul here. Yeah, I, I think that's what you're going to want to do. Uh, you want to... Try and just you want if you're Seton Hall, you want to be careful with fouls right here. But I mean, I think that's the only opportunity that you really have. The thing to keep in mind, though, Seton Hall has only had two team fouls yes. in the fourth quarter as well, so they're going to have to foul a couple of times to get Villanova to the line. And of course, that'll only happen if they don't get the steal. So can the Pirate pressure help them here? Try to give them one last chance. They do have the fouls to give there, so stop the clock a little bit, reset, catch your breath, and try and go after it again. We'll see how Villanova handles this. They've handled everything so well today with such a young team. The two figureheads, Gadeka and Segris, have combined for 35 points, 20 and 15 respectively. They've had the role players stepped up. They've kept it a low-scoring game. Can they see it out to pick up a vital Big East road win? Onkin will inbound with 18 seconds. Into Gadeka, Pirates have to foul here. Elmore hesitated, and boy, Coach DeFalco and Coach Pizzella were imploring her to foul. They have to foul again. Three seconds came off the clock. Down to 15 seconds. Villanova will inbound again. They go right to Gadeka. Elmore fouls again. 14.2 to go. And they'll have to foul yet again here. Onkin will inbound. Same inbounds play again. This time Segrist is fouled with 13.1. Fourth personal foul on Shadeen Samuels. And that'll finally put Seton Hall in the penalty. Maddie Segrist at the line, two free throws. And the redshirt freshman coolly knocks down the first. Yeah, Villanova knew exactly who to try and get the ball into that time. Seegers is shooting 73% from the three throw line, so they knew get it to her to knock down some clutch shots. Makes them both. Three of three from the line for Maddie Seegrist. Seton Hall will call a timeout with 13 seconds to play. Down by five, 60 to 55. And now it really comes down to how quickly can Seton Hall get that first shot up. This comes down to exactly what Seton Hall is known for, their pace for pushing the bucket down. But now, not only important is that, it's getting a good shot off. You can't just chuck it up here. You need to get a good shot and try to get fouled on it as well. And for Villanova, that's basically it. Defend, but you can't foul yeah. here at all costs. Yeah. You do not want to give Seton Hall the opportunity to get to the line and even it up. Especially with the, sh with the clock stopped here, Villanova knows they're so close at this point. They just really need one stop. Or if they do concede here, they really just need to make one free throw to finish the job, unless Seton Hall does hit a three here. Pirates have to hurry. Right into Elmore. Posts up, gets inside, misses the shot. Gadeka has it. Pirates can't get it to Segrist until Segrist is fouled. And there's 5.7 to go, and Villanova is right on the doorstep of a huge road victory. Just a little too soft from Desiree Elmore going up for that bucket underneath right there. Maddie Segrist, 17 points, nine rebounds, three assists, and perfect at the line so far today, five of five. And she's one free throw away from sealing this up. She's short on that, she gets the rebound. James has it. And Villanova, against the odds, wins in South Orange yet again. And they continue 
to own St. Paul inside Walsh Gymnasium of late. Well, win number 772 for Harry Perretta in his remarkable career. Villanova bounces back after a one and one homestand in the Big East. They win it over Seton Hall, and the final score is Villanova 61, Seton Hall 55. We'll be back with the star of the game after this on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. Villanova 61, Seton Hall 55. Sean St. Jacques, Megan Caffrey back here with you on the Big East Digital Network. And we have a special guest, Manny Seacrest from Villanova here with us. 18 points, 10 rebounds, a vital road victory for your Wildcats. Uh, How did you guys get it done? Um, I mean, we knew, like, they're such a talented team. Like, they have so many kids that can score on any given night. So we knew, like, we just had to slow the game down. Obviously, 61 55 is, like, a little low scoring and, um, Harry had a great game plan going in, just grind it out, and that's what we did. How important has the defense been this season? It seems like it's been a catalyst yeah, all year long. Huge. It really led to this win today. Huge, because like, we have so many new kids, and including myself, like who haven't had that much game experience, so we can't always score like 80 points like these other teams, so we got to keep them from scoring 80. So. That's the goal. Mary, you were just, or, excuse me, Maddie, you were just talking about the game plan was to come in and slow this team down. Defensively, how was your team able to slow down Seton Hall? Um, we actually like played a zone a little bit. We normally don't do that, but um, just by doing that, getting out on the shooters, like using the whole shot clock, stuff like that, we weren't trying to push the ball. So, I mean, that's how we were able to do it. This is your first Big East Conference play season that you're in. You're on the road, your next game up against St. John's. How difficult is it to play in conference? Um, I mean, obviously, like, these teams, like, 
know like you know you more if that makes sense so it's, it's it's definitely tougher and like i mean mary like has helped us all like going into it she has the most game experience like telling us like what to look for to slow down like relax like it's just like any other game a double double a special performance and a w thanks for joining us Congre no congratulations thanks for having me seat hall against villanova it continues seven straight wins for villanova over Seton Hall. They continue to dominate here at Walsh Gym, and she's a big reason why here on the Big East Digital Network.